And something that really uh, caught my attention, I think maybe last year or a couple of years ago, I don't remember exactly. So you were debating with some others about uh, moving away from Meetup, the the um, website Meetup, because it was expensive and they had other limitations or something like that. And then you decided to code it. So uh, this interested me a lot because it's not easy to do. Even if you do it full time, it's challenging and there might also be some backend stuff. So then um, I, I kept an attention on it, but I would like today to ask you why you did it. I, I just mentioned a bit about it, but really why you built it and why and maybe how? Yeah, sure. Um, so it started with, uh, we, we used meetup.com to host the meetups, so to advertise the meetups, to register attendees, etc. Uh, it was good. Uh, Back then, the, the account was owned by uh, David. Uh, I didn't know he was paying, uh, so he, he did that out of his own pocket. Uh, and then when he left, uh, he transferred the account to me and Cedric. And then uh, he was fine. Uh, then I, I incurred the cost for, I think, one year. Uh, so you have to pay every six months. Um, but then... Uh, they, I think they changed some stuff to announce that attendees will also have to pay or pay per, pay per RSVP or something. They didn't end up implementing it because there was a lot of backlash. Uh, but that, that triggered me a bit because we were dependent on some other platform and they could change their pricing at any time. And also, uh, they did something that, uh, that completely, uh, convinced me that it was right to go away from them is when I when I uh, didn't pay the renewal for the front end coders group on meetup uh, they actually made it they actually advertised to all members in that group that you can choose to become the admin if you want to pay uh, the subscription uh, which means that anyone could choose to take over the group uh, and because you're admin, you get access to uh, everyone's DMs, everyone's contact. Mm. Uh, so I think that was very unethical, unethical um, to allow anyone to take over any group, mm. uh, basically by paying uh, a fee. Uh, so that, that was when I was convinced that it was the right decision to go away from them. Mm. Um, and because we are web developers, we should be able to build a website, right? Yeah. So why not? Uh, so that was the idea. Uh, so the first step was to export our data from them, uh, which they did not make easy. Uh, you don't have an export button. So I I had to find their API, uh, which they don't document properly. So through a lot of trial and error, I was able to find the right paths to export our data which I did back then. So I got a, a dump of all the data. So which meetups happen, how many attendees, uh, where they happen. Uh, and then uh, this was going to be the basis for whatever website will come next. At least we don't lose the data. Um, because nobody wants to do data entry again for four years. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, so then the, the, the next uh, step was to choose uh, what do we use to build the website, right? Uh, which framework, basically. Um, so I think uh, the first one, so we had a few iterations. So I think the first one was built with Next 2, uh, which was the previous version of Next. Um, so that was done quite fast. I think I did most of the work. Uh, because I already had in my mind what we should have. We should have a home page, uh, a meetup page, uh, a meetup listing page, uh, some gallery stuff. So that was it. And then uh, soon enough, next the next the next version of Next was announced. Mm -hmm. I was two years ago. Uh, so then I rebuilt the website in Next Free. Um, which was uh, not not that hard because most of the code was the same, but the structure was uh, much simpler. It, it was also an excuse for me to learn next free. Mm. Um, and then uh, editing files directly on GitHub to update meetups was a was a great experience. So 
So we thought, okay, we need a, a CMS of some, of some kind behind the website. Uh, so then uh, I, I did some research and ended up picking Directus as our CMS. Back then, Directus was on version 7. Uh, today, it's, it is 11, I think, 10 or 11. Uh, fun fact, Directus is also built with Vue.js. It's an open source project. So it, it tied well in the ecosystem. Um, so I created an account on Directus. Uh, they had a free tier that you could just rent and not, not rent, but just use for free. Uh, so we created like, you know, uh, the tables, uh, events, uh, speakers. Uh, it's, it was a pretty, very pretty UI. You, you create everything and then you get an API at the end of it. So then it was two websites, the CMS running on the cloud and then the next website, uh, running on a different cloud which was Netlify at the time. Mm -hmm. And then the next website at build time would talk to the API of the CMS, get all of the data and generate the website. Um, so that was uh, the flow, how it works. And then uh, after a few months, uh, Astro was announced, uh, the new hot thing in town. <laughs> so obviously uh, it was a very hard decision, but I, because I really like uh, Next and Vue, uh, so then I decided, okay, um, uh, this is, it looks really good. Uh, we are just a listing website. We don't have many interactions, so it should be pretty good for our website. Uh, for, in terms of SEO stuff, it's great. In terms of build speed, it's amazing. So then the mission was to rebuild the, the front end that new website using Astro, which, uh, which we started, I think, uh, almost one and a half years ago. Um, so the next website that was started right before it is still on our GitHub. People, so we, we have two websites actually that talk to the same API, but just one is published. Uh, and then while moving to Astro, I, I decided to update the look and feel of the website as well. So we have a, we had a complete new design, um, which was, there was no planning behind it. I just, Okay, this looks good. Let's do this. Uh, okay. It was it was built over over months of iteration. Uh, that's why it looks how it does today. So then, yeah, uh, Astro was a, a static site generator, right? So traditionally, I don't like using SSL because I'm I'm not comfortable with backend stuff uh, running on on the server. Hmm. I I don't like running Node on my server. It feels very unsafe to me. Um, so I would rather just generate the uh, static files and then ship that. And the server is basically a file server. Then. Um, so uh, our whole website is generated at build time. So even if someone nukes our CMS, it doesn't affect the website uh, because it's already built. Right? Um, so that was the major release of our website. So it's available. You can look at every meetups, etc. For RSVPs, we choose the, uh, we chose the easy path, which was, uh, Google forms. Um, so basically I would ask, uh, Mahima to create the forms because I'm very lazy to create that, configure it. Uh, she has the templates, knows all the questions, so she uh, she does that. Um, and then we put the link to the form on the website, and then that's how people used to RSVP for meetups. Uh, obviously, the Google form uh, drops the data in a Google sheet that we can use to to view it properly. Uh, that's also where I get the stats of uh, who are how many developers are present, how many. Uh, our students, what's the age group, etc. Um, so I think that by then the next iteration was uh, Google Forms, uh, not that great, looks not that professional. Uh, we can probably build something that looks nice, right? So then we decided, okay, um, we will try to uh, build the RSVP, but also uh, within the website. Uh, but then this was tricky because our website is uh, statically generated. There is no database behind it. Uh, there is no login. 
So how do you uh, get all the information? Because obviously you need to who is logging, who has all the speed and you don't let them all speed twice, uh, stuff like that. So then, uh, because it was uh, service are generated, uh, we had to go for the island architecture in Astro, mm-hmm. which means that uh, small components are interactive and they are literally small SPAs that ha- that can interact with external services. So then we we picked uh, Superbase uh, to do this uh, with the help of uh, Nicola, uh, Nicola Manu, who, who was extremely helpful in building the first version of the RGP. He uh, scaffolded the database on the Superbase side. He helped build the login system that we had on our website. Uh, so if you log in with Google, it would actually authenticate through Superbase uh, create your account uh, on Superbase, and then you are able to RCP to meetups. Uh, this was uh, how it was built. Then I had my uh, some of my very technically able friends audit how this works, uh, because you know we just built it. We don't know what we are doing, um, and I was immediately recommended to not do that because uh, the data was way too frag- fragmented mm. uh, because RGP data was living in the Superbase da- uh, database, but uh, profile uh, meetup information was in the director's CMS. Mm. So it was very disconnected. And if you had to, s- who is attending what, you have to reconcile two databases. And you can't really do that on the client side because it's not safe. Mm. So then you have to build cloud functions to do that. Uh, so it's a, it's a lot of it's a, it was very messy um, to maintain. So then uh, that's when uh, I after the beach meetup, which was really nice by the way, a really cool speech by you. Um, after the beach meetup, we hung out and we said, okay, what can we do? Um, and back then, Cedric and Dan Schill were very helpful. Uh, they because. Uh, especially Tanshil because he, I think he had just worked with authentication stuff. Uh, and then he actually described authentication to me in, in very simple words that I never understood before. <laughs> uh, he said that authentication is just a series of steps that you have to, to follow. Uh, it's nothing more than that. And that, that made a lot of sense. Uh, especially, oh, if it's just you go do this, do that, do that, and then you're in. Uh, if you miss one step, <laughs> you can, it can get it can get very crazy. So then uh, we looked up on the beach. We looked up the docs of uh, directors, uh, and it's it looks like directors lets you log in with Google. So uh, that would have been the solution. Uh, we log in directly in our CMS through an API, and uh, not not in the CMS, but through an API, and then that one database would store all of our data, right? Uh, so we would not need Superbase anymore. Mm-hmm. So that was the idea. So then the work started. Uh, we had a lot of, uh, uh, a few meetings, long meetings, trying to debug, uh, diving into the APIs, uh, trying to make the login work. It finally did. Uh, because again, we are not using SSR. There's no server that's mm-hmm. processing the login. Uh, it's being done client side. Uh, so it's it's a bit more tricky than than the usual uh, of with uh, with SSU or whatever you call it. So finally, it worked, uh, and then I was able to create all of my attendees table in Directors itself. Mm. So now uh, you are able to go into a profile and see which meetup you attended. Uh, stuff like that is possible now because it's the same the same database basically. Uh, and then, uh, like you see now, we can list who is attending which meetup on the same page, which is uh, a really cool feature and very easy to build now. Uh, we can lock, I mean, lock, I mean, stop RGP or stop or start RGP when we want mm-hmm. through a toggle because it's the same database again. Mm-hmm. Before, it wasn't that simple. We, we, you could you could lock it on the CMS, but the database doesn't know it's locked, so you have to do another check. Uh, so now it's very simple, and yeah, that's uh, I think the the February meetup that's going to happen is the first one that's using this OSGP system, mm-hmm. and I think it's working pretty good so so far. 
Um, so there were other considerations, such as uh, we know people will not update their profile. <laughs> uh, so how do we make sure they do? Uh, so the decision was when they are SVP and they enter the detail, uh, we use that <laughs> to update the RGP table, but also we update their profile automatically uh, behind the scenes uh, with with that data. And and yeah, that way we have updated information on everyone. Uh, and of course, now we we need to add the famous cookies mm. pop up because we are storing data. Yeah. Uh, so we will need to add that soon. Uh, we should already have added it, but you know we are developers. <laughs> uh, we want to build a feature, but we, we we have to add it soon. We have to add a privacy policy, things like that. Uh, we do have a privacy policy because it was required for the OAuth. Mm. Uh, it's there already, but it's not listed. But if you go to the link directly, it's there. Um, and now uh, the next part, which is the part